Cool. And so if the forage is here, the wind is, the wind's blowing into it. Got one. Yes, sir. Another one. Another one. So what's going on folks? Welcome to Uncut, my series here on the channel where the cameras are recording, I'm going bass fishing and nothing is cut out, showing you the good, the bad, and the ugly, and hopefully I catch a few fish and teach you guys something along the way. On today's episode, it is a beautiful, brisk fall day here in northern Minnesota. I'm on a very small lake that I think I have a good chance of dissecting relatively quickly and catching some fish for you guys. This video is brought to you by AFCO Performance Fishing Clothing. More on them to come later in the video. Now the first thing I love to do when I get to a new body of water is get all the rods out, put the trolling motor on high and buzz down the bank, checking out everything visually with my eyes. I want to see how shallow the shallow cover is. In this body of water, we have cattails, lily pads, and shallow grasses. And if I don't find any success up shallow, casting around a frog or a swim jig or a moving bait like a chatterbait, I'm going to go out deeper and fish a little bit deeper water. But as you can see here, I catch two fish back to back on a swim jig up shallow in some pencil reeds. And that's where we're going to begin our uncut. Oh yes. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. There we go. There we go. Let's go, baby. They are on this point. They are absolutely loaded on this point. Get in here, baby. Let's go. Let's go. First nice fish of the uncut. Probably go just over two pounds on the Outcast Tackle Heavy Cover Swim Jig. I mean, look at how he ate that thing. That's how you know they're feeding on bluegill. They want the swim jig. And there's a few reasons why I chose a swim jig. One, I mean, you can see here we got tons of aquatic vegetation, but two, I want to cover water as quickly as possible. And you know, the swim jig and maybe I guess the, the, the weedless, you know, rigged paddle tail swim bait, it's really the only two ways that you can, at least in calm water, really effectively cover water. And the swim jig doesn't really take a whole lot of action. Like I don't have to like be swimming it like all the pros do. On this body of water, I'm probably just gonna like slowly retrieve it, maybe give it a few pops here and there, let it drop in some holes as the lighting changes, thank you. But because I know the fish in these bodies of water are heavily feeding on bluegill practically all year round, I'm gonna throw this little bluegill swim jig. And after this cast here, I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like. Here, I'll just, I'll bring it in now. Look at that thing. Look at that beautiful little swim jig with a rage menace on the back. Mmm, delicious. And I'm gonna be casting it in and around this shallow stuff, you know, as far as we have it. So when I first started fishing on that corner over there, this stuff was just too shallow. And now that I've come on this, this little main lake point here, I've noticed that the cattails got a little bit deeper. And you're gonna hear me say cattail and reed and uh, pencil reed and tulies. I mean, there's, there's so many names for these things, but I think since these are a really skinny variety, pretty sure these are pencil reeds. I will confirm that on the screen right here. But you know what, regionally, y'all make all them something different. So I'm going to power pull up. I caught one of those fish in the intro there up here. I caught one on the on the point and then that's that last fish here to start the uncut was also on the point. Now we did get a cold front. The water here is 66 degrees which makes me think that fall is truly here. I mean you can see on the drone shot here the the trees are orange. Not all of them of course but a few are orange. A lot are yellow which is definitely fun to see. In Texas, we don't we don't get many many uh, red and orange trees. It kind of goes straight from green to brown, and so that's why I come up here to Minnesota. I have been filming videos like crazy the last week, and I've got four more days, including today, to film content. Which a lot of it you all won't even see until the springtime, just because the baby's coming in January, and I want to have a whole bunch of content stored up. That way, I've got continuous videos coming to you guys. So I'm. I'm working extra hard now. But we'll do, we'll do more life updates later. It's back to fishing. Now, could I throw a vibrating jig around here? I probably could. And you know what? If I, if I do start catching a bunch of fish on the edge out here, 100% going to grab a vibrating jig because we just got kind of short grass down there on the bottom. And that leads us to conditions. Again, like I said, cold front. It's about the second cold front in the month of September that these uh, Minnesota lakes have experienced. And it's, it's, I think it's the harsher one. The last one went from 90s to 70s, and this one went from 70s to 40s. It's about 48 degrees outside when I'm filming this video. And I don't know how, to be honest, how much cold fronts affect northern fish. I mean, it's, it's, they've got to have an effect, but 
I mean, I've caught three fish on a swim jig and the water dropped like eight degrees last night. So if you're in Texas, cold front drops, water temperature, eight degrees, man, I'm not sure if you're catching them up shallow. But up here, these fish are, again, northern strain. They're more used to that kind of a temperature change. Now, could I catch them on a frog today? It's possible. I did start fishing with a frog up around the pads, um, but just because we got some wind, and really, I mean, we're gonna have wind on a lot of today's uncut. That's why I'm, I'm mic'd up down here. I'm just gonna cover as much water as possible, hitting a lot of high key pieces of structure and cover. You're gonna, so you're gonna see me fish shallow for a little while, then I'm probably gonna swing my way to the edge of the grass because there's always fish on grass lines. I don't care if it's Minnesota in the fall or Texas in the spring or Kentucky in the summer. I mean, there are, there are bass on grass lines. And especially if I go like this whole stretch without getting another one, which again, I doubt because I got three back to back to back. I would assume there's more bass in here. Come on now. I guess my retrieve with the swim jig is more of like a constant reel and the only action I'm giving it is with the reel handle. Cause you know, you see the pros talk about like the Alabama shake where they're retrieving it like this, kind of popping the rod tip as they fish it. That's more of a shad spawn thing. I'm not sure if, if bluegill even move like that. <laughs> bluegill aren't very twitchy. Bluegill kind of just swim. So if that's what I'm imitating, I don't feel the need to do any kind of crazy retrieve to it. And we're gonna have a lot of light changes. You can tell here, this, the clouds are very, the, are very partly today. That's how I would describe them. The clouds are partly. So I apologize for the inconsistencies in lighting on that back camera. I'll do my best to color grade, adjust it. And like I said, this video is brought to you by AFCO Clothing. I have represented AFCO for, I believe, six years, maybe? I mean, it's been a stinking long time. They, uh, they were the first clothing company to believe in, in the power of social media and influencers and super grateful for the relationship that I have with them. They supply some clothing for me to print my merch on. I got my Infinite Outdoors Reaper sweatshirt. And maybe by the time this video, video comes out, I'll have more Reapers available on the website. They're, it's gonna be part of my fall merch drop. I'm not sure though if they'll be done by that time. So stay tuned if they're not. If they are, I'll have that on the screen as well. But yeah, they're a big supporter of the TRF channel and they have tons of other clothes besides just the Reaper. I mean, I'm wearing the Barricade bibs right now. They're a good light bib for, you know, up to like the 40s, 40 degree temperature with, you know, joggers or pants underneath any colder and I'll go with a different model of their, of their, um, their bibs. But it's just a nice brisk day. Oh, and if you wanna get 15% uh, off your order, you can use code TRF2023. And I assume if you watch this 2024, it's probably TRF2024. Now I am sick of, I'm sick of this lighting. It is way too dark. I'm just gonna go back here and adjust that. All right. How does that look back there? That looks good? Yeah, it looks better. That looks better. And kinda, kinda surprised, honestly. Like, I, I, that I caught three that quick, including like to start the uncut and then nothing. But that's kinda how fish are in the fall. They go from being super, what do you call it, schooled up in the summer to being super schooled up again in the fall, but more up shallow and they move around a lot. It's so like that point had fish on it today. This afternoon it might not, or tomorrow it might not. Oh my gosh, <laughs> letting it sit. There he is. Well, you know what? We caught one. So I'm going to power pull down. Ice cream cone bass, single scoop. And I'm just realizing that the, the light is super bright here as well. This is gonna be a struggle gonna be a struggle bus to get good lighting. But I mean, I let that jig sit still, which makes me feel like I should retrieve 
a little bit slower because that fish ate it as I was talking to the camera. I'm gonna cast over this point here. The last three fish though have all come on the edge. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna scan out deep with live scope, see what I see. I mean, it doesn't look like it gets, it gets deep for a while. I'll have to kind of troll off the bank to find deeper water, I'm guessing. But man, nothing else. Fish was a loner. Fish was a lonely loner. And surprisingly, we got a few ba a few boats out here. I think they're all, you know, walleye guys. But we got a grandpa and grandma maybe over there, and then we got two guys in what looks like a wrapped Lund, maybe? I don't know. But I mean, it's a Tuesday. I'm shocked. I'm shocked that on a Tuesday, I'm, uh, I'm, just, I'm seeing a lot of fishermen on a, a tiny lake. But also kind of confirms, you know what? Maybe this lake's good. Maybe it's got fishermen on, on a Tuesday in the fall because it's got fish in it. And that would be nice. Nice and big if true. But all I'm doing, covering water with the swim jig. I keep forgetting that I gotta reel it slower. There we go. And we got, a, we got a lot of mixtures of grasses. I mean, we've got some standard coontail, it looks like. We've got pads, pencil reeds, cabbage, whatever that leafy stuff is. You know what? I keep saying whatever that leafy stuff is. Let me show y'all what I got. Let me show you. Or my, I should say, let me show you what my mom got. My mommy got this for me. She got me. Let's see if y'all can read this. Right there, boom. Aquatic vegetation identification cards. So I'm gonna grab me a crankbait here. I'm going to grab a piece of this, these leaves, these leafy leaves. There we go. Do my best to not break it. Oh, dang it, well, there it is. Okay, so now that I got this leaf, this is what I keep telling you guys I'm gonna do and I, like all the time and I, I've never done it. So let's look through this book here together. I'm gonna put I'm gonna go sit down. All right. Let's see what we got folks. Welcome to science with Tyler. I'm sure somebody out there is like, oh, I know what that is. Okay, it's not algae. Yeah, there you go. It's just American pondweed. How about that? Now that I know what that is, I'm always gonna tell y'all. That's pond weed. You learn something new every day. We got pond weed, we got, I'm sure we got milfoil somewhere in this lake. Cause I saw at the boat ramp, I saw like the whatever, help us not spread invasive species uh, type deal. American pond weed, cool. I'm guessing that's because it's in America's ponds. And lakes, obviously, because we're on a lake. But I'm not happy with how this is going because it was fast and furious. And now, now we are fast and furious without, without Paul Walker, which is not, not so fast and furious. Come on now. I like to try to figure out as quickly as possible what kind of structure they're sitting on. And I, th I think I figured it out. They're on the edge of this, of this grass. But sometimes you'll have to get like even more intricate. Like are they on the edge of the, of the reeds? Are they on the edge that drops off from the grass from the reeds? So I'm gonna continually try as I make my casts to cast to slightly different things over and over again. And that's really what forming a pattern is all about. And this applies to you guys who, who just fish from the bank as well. You know, you might not have as many opportunities to fish different things, but you gotta, you gotta be able to fish what you have. And so you gotta be able to pick apart the bank you have, the structure you have, because the bass will tell you eventually where they wanna sit, what they wanna eat. And that's kinda what the whole point of this uncut series is, is, is I do this on camera. 
uncut. How's my camera looking, by the way? We're looking good. Just a nice day. I come up here because Texas is too hot. Now, when this video comes out, it's probably going to be just after that, uh, that cool cold front that I hear my folks in Texas are having right now. So that's fun. Hopefully when I get home, that's, uh, that's still going on. I said in my, in my September lures video that Texas gets about one cold front in September. And that's what they got. Hmm. Oh, thought I had one. And I almost want to get the vibrating jig out now. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. I'm going to do that. I keep telling you guys the cool things I'm going to do. So the, the smart things I'm going to do and then I don't do them. So putting the swim jig down. Checking my lighting. We're okay. We're not bad. All right. Not lose these rods here. Where is my vibrating jig rod? Got, well, I've got one in here somewhere. This'll do. This'll do, donkey. I'm gonna have to take this stealth fighter jig off. And because they are feeding on the bluegill, again, I'm assuming, that, that's, uh, that's, the, that's a well-educated guess that I'm willing to make. I am gonna throw, hopefully I have the bluegill color. If not, I'll just throw a green pumpkin. Do I have the bluegill color? Let's see. Let's see, no, I don't think so. Don't think I do. Oh dang. Oh darn, oh gee darn. Alrighty, green pumpkin, tungsten, thunder, cricket it is. And somehow my box is not closing. What hook, here we go. Got a hook was stopping. Well, you know what? We're still not closing. What is blocking this box? Or is it just the is it just the boxes themselves that are kind of getting warped? I don't know, man. Something didn't feel right. There we go. Okay, got it. Now this vibrating jig I use in ultra shallow water, so the the trailer is rigged flat. I'm just going to go ahead and spin that real quick um, because I want to get it deeper in the water column. And by doing that, I probably, you know, weakened, weakened the soft plastic a little bit. I'll need a new trailer after a fish or two, most likely. But I love me a tungsten thunder cricket. Come on now, baby. As always, my tackle is linked down in the video description. And, uh, those are all affiliate tackle links. So if y'all could shop for your tackle using those, it doesn't cost you anything but a simple click. And uh, it helps me out tremendously. And who doesn't love Tackle Warehouse, man? They got everything. All right. Bazinga, baby. Let's go. And after this cast here, I'd say it's time we, uh, we start a brand new clip. So my editing is a little bit easier. All right, new clip. I also want to put these rods at least closer to the edge of the boat. And I'm going to make a few more casts as I'm power pulled down here out this general direction. Let me turn live scope. I mean, I don't see like an edge yet. I'm going to have to get farther out to really see an edge, but just want to see if they're out on the flat. Slowly retrieve this thing. Give it a few pops every once in a while. Give it a few pops. What I really want to find is a point that's got some, it's got some coontail on it so I can throw a uh, topwater walking bait. One of my favorite ways to catch them on any lake that's got, you know, shallowish grass is find a point with grass and throw a walking bait over it. But I'm not really, I mean, point live scope out there, I'm not seeing much grass. So I'm going to keep going. And it seems like every time I adjust the lighting, I blow out my background. So y'all get to see like the behind the scenes now. 
if, you, if, you, if this is your first uncut watching, you really get to see the whole filming process by yourself can be challenging, especially when you have changing weather conditions. And you know what, a vibrating jig might be, might be too much for these fish. I'm, I'm thinking not, just, just based on what I know about bass. But maybe in this clear water, cold front, maybe they want something a little more finessey. So we're gonna give this a, a college try. Give this a, give this a fight in Texas Aggie try. Really focus on the edge. One thing I don't like though, is then I think it was different back there, is that, and again, you got you gotta use polarized sunglasses to see this kind of thing. All those fish came where there was more like coontail or milfoil cabbage, whatever it was leading up to this. And now that I'm at these cattails, even though it looks the exact same from the naked eye, if you just look down the bank, the underwater contour actually changed, which meant there was more structure up against the, uh, the pencil reeds. And so I think that was a key because out here, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty flat. I'm not liking it. I mean, you can also see on live scope, I can tilt the camera. As I point, I'm pointing left right now towards the main lake. There's really no, I mean, a few stalks of grass, but not really a whole lot, even as I pan all the way this way. So I'm going to actually put my foot on the trolling motor, go a little faster because healthy, thick grass is crucial this time of year, anywhere you go. Tennessee, Oregon, Texas, Minnesota. If you're not around the healthiest, thickest grass, you're probably not around the majority of the bass. So that's why I'm gonna go pretty fast here. You know what, I'm actually gonna, I'm actually gonna swing out deep here. Fish my thunder cricket, whatever I can find out here. Cause I think that it's, I think that it's deeper. Got, it's got better thick grass maybe. Maybe not. Spit. Two to back, two to back, two to back, spit. I mean, like, I'm, 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 all, ugh, I'm gonna be honest. I'm surprised that I'm not seeing, like, a drop off out here. I got a live scope down there. Y'all can see it. I'm, it's just still six to seven feet. So, I'm wondering where the drop's gonna be. See, this is where. The angler, the tournament angler in me is like, all right, put the rods down. We're going to idle around, find the grass edge. Which, you know what, might be the smartest move. But I like trolling around and casting around. So monkey see, monkey don't do in this scenario. If you're on a brand new body of water and, you know, you're trying to figure it out, man, get on your, get on your big engine for just a few minutes. I just want to see what this point looks like. And maybe after this point I will. I'm just kind of also assuming that I'm gonna lose some retention on this video if, uh, if I get on the big motor and start graphing around. Pontoon over there? Man, we got some people out here. On the pontoon. Making waves and catching rays out on the roof. Jumping off the back, don't act like you don't want to. What's the next line? Party in slow motion? I think it is. Out here in the open, motorboat. On the pontoon. And again, I'm just gonna fish high percentage stuff. So I didn't like the way that bank line over there was looking. And so I'm working my way up to this point that y'all see here on the drone shot. And you know what, I'm, I'm talking about all these drone shots. I need to get my phone out and write down when I film, film the drone, what I'm looking at here. Drone shots, we gotta get full lake trees. I can spell trees right. 
main lake point across from ramp. All right, good. There's another behind the scenes of the tube. Make sure y'all stay tuned for the comment challenge. Sure, we're gonna have a fun one today. Y'all, I mean, y'all really, really loved that last comment challenge on my last pond uncut. That was fun. Asking y'all about your favorite fishing memory. Gosh, what do I have? What do I have? I saw a bunch of bass. Holy cow, on the point. Guess who could have guessed it? Guess who could have guessed it? Me. I guessed it. What a nice fish. Nice fish. Get in here. Get in here. Well, first I need to get the lighting better because it just got blown out. There we go. Nice fish. Nice fish. Yes, sir. Beautiful. A little bit bigger than the last one. Again, the vibrating jig gone. And as soon as I cast in there, I got a, there's a boil and a bunch of bluegill all moved. And that right there, gorgeous Minnesota bass. Thank you, friend. See ya. I mean, I'm, I'm not lying when I'm telling you guys that these fall bass really love high percentage stuff. They really love the points, both above water and underwater, because that's where the bait moves. That's where the whole ecosystem moves toward the, toward the points, toward the dips, the depressions. And so if you have limited time on a body of water in the fall, man, just focus your efforts on the point. I'm not gonna guarantee success, but obviously that's where some bluegill were because I saw them bust as soon as that fish ate. I can see them on live scope. Let me show you what they look like. That right there is all bluegill. Bunch of them right down there. And so if the forage is here, the wind is, the wind's blowing into it. Got one. Yes, sir. Another one. Another one. I'm gonna water ski you in. Don't give you time to jump. Yes, sir. Let's go. Let's go. Yes. Oh, the lighting. The lighting changed again. Oh my gosh. Why can't I get something right? Beautiful. I almost want to run my settings in auto, but that might not might not look the best. Maybe if I do. That one, it's a good happy medium. Yeah, we'll stick with that for now. Let's go! Slow retrieve, vibrating jig over the point. Oh, baby. I love it. I like it, I love it. I want some more of it. Got myself power pulled down right here. Boat ain't moving. Yeah, we got. we definitely got some wind. But the one thing I like about, again, small bodies of water is that even though it's, it's windy, I'm on the windy, I guess it could be windier over there, could be more built up, but the lake just doesn't have that much room for waves to build up. So even on a windy, a windy day like this, I can still fish, you know, the majority of the lake. And you know what? I caught two on the point. Let me go one more cast and then I'm going to switch to the frog because I guarantee you there's a fish up there in the pad somewhere that wants to eat a frog. That was fun. That was a whole lot of fun. Not gonna complain about that. No, I won't. Okay, where's the frog? Actually, you know what? I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make one cast on each side with a walking bait just because I'm feeling it. This is my, my new favorite walking bait color here, redhead. It's a saltwater sexy dog. Now does the color trigger bites? I don't know, I feel like it does, but that's just my experience. I'm also catching them because I'm using it. That's, that's the, the, the fallacy of the, of the angler is, oh, this lure catches them. Well, is that the one you throw the most often? Yeah, okay. That could be why. Now I got my hook stuck. The walking bait is not the best bait for choppy water. And really there's not a whole lot of top waters that are good for choppiness, but it seems to catch on the braid a decent amount.
And I've been thinking lately, I really think my favorite top water is a walking bait. I love a frog, I like a plopper. A, a nice, silent, subtle popper bite can be fun. But man, the, the bites you can get on a walking bait, they're just explosive. So, I think the walking bait has taken over as my favorite. Most, most frog bites are not vicious. They're really not. Most frog bites are kind of tame. Very rare that you get a crazy cannonball on a, on a frog. They kind of slurp it. Come on now. I'm definitely gonna whip this thing out a few times just because I like it so much. I want to catch one. And you can catch a giant on the dang walking bait. All right. That's the only try we're giving her for now, though. Let's pick up the dang frog. I'm going to go up there first. Beautiful. And see what happens there when you make smart lure moves. I thought about the vibrating jig and then I acted on it and tied it on and caught a fish because of it. Two fish actually. I liked the fact that the wind was pushing up against this bank. The swim jig could catch them here, but the vibrating jig makes it a little easier for them to find it. Zoom. Long cast with the frog. Now I'm gonna be honest, when you're that far away from the frog, it's really hard to like, look, maybe I'm getting older and I can't see as well, but it's hard to see if I'm getting a bite on my frog in the pads that are going like this. I'm gonna get a little closer as well. Oh, what a cast, oh, perfect literally exactly where I wanted to go. <laughs> Party in slow motion. Man, we're already to the singing portion of the uncut. That was fast. That was fast. Usually don't get to sing until later. But I guess I'm also catching some fish, having some fun, so. That's nice. Man, it's just kind of cold. I mean, like, I know it says it's 48. It feels a little colder than that. Like this, this Reaper, I like to almost need like another layer underneath. It's kind of chilly. And just like I thought, we have some better grass down here on the edge. So yes, we got good coontail. Uh-huh, okay. That's the deal. Cattails. Pencil reeds, whatever you want to call them, that have no grass up against them, probably not good. Find an area, find a point, a hump that's got it all mixed together, and that's going to be the deal. So, man, we figured that out in the first few minutes, and now the rest of this uncut, we can just run and gun to find stuff like that. But I think I'm going to put down the frog. I don't know. I'm just not... I'm not vibing with it. Not thinking that's gonna be the deal. How are we looking? Once again, overblown. Okay. Man, we even get to like, we get to this part of the point and I lose all my grass. It's, it's just like a tiny little section that had better grass. Like out here. I think it cast out here. And we got some wind. Hopefully this microphone is is doing its gosh. Oh my gosh, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> what I tell you guys, what I tell you, the better grass is where the bass are. Heck yeah. Man, we are we are having a master class on fall fishing today. Figuring out the pattern, dissecting it, catching fish. If you're not around good grass, you're not catching good bass. 
Let me make sure my lens is clean. Oh yeah, baby. Mmm. Got some water on my sunglasses. I've got a feeling that today's gonna be a fun day. That today is gonna be a fun day. That today's gonna be a bass catching day. A feeling. Ooh, I see some zebra mussels on a rock down there. So that's why the water's so clear. They got them zebs. They got them zebra mussels. We're looking okay. It's just, this is a weird day because it's like the sky can be so bright, but the trees are dark. I'm wearing dark clothes. It's just hard to, it's hard to get everything you want out of the lighting. So y'all might see a lot of chest mount today, which is not my favorite. I like to use the Sony, but can't win them all. Cannot win them all. all right, last cast here. And then we'll keep on going. Covering water. Dun 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 dun. Good good night. Tell nice that night. Let's live it up. Da, 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 da. Let's keep it moving. Keep it moving. And I don't see much grass up here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna focus on the deeper areas. And y'all are gonna see me look down at live scope a lot. And I, I wanted to talk about that for a second. Like, let me make sure I've got good lighting to talk about it. Well, I don't not really, but when I use live scope, and there's a big misconception, I think with most anglers out there that don't have it, especially guys that hate on it, is that we're always staring down at it like this, looking at individual fish, casting our lures at the fish, and they're biting on command. And one, that doesn't happen all the time. And two, that's hardly ever how I'm using it. Like on today's body of water, and really like a lot of places I fish, especially if you have grass, I'm constantly using my trolling motor, turning it left and right to find the structure down there because I don't want to make a cast or at least too many casts throughout the day that are pointless casts where like I look in the column and there's not even the chance of a fish on the bottom or in the area. And so it, it, I, just, I, I like teaching you guys how to become efficient anglers and understanding your body of water. No matter how big or small it is, that's part of becoming efficient. And so I, I hate the, the amount of animosity towards forward facing sonar because the the for me the the bite and the excitement is still there it's not like even if i see a fish i'm not excited about it like i still love the mystery of the catch and especially when i'm chunking around a vibrating jig i mean there's no i'm not live scoping i'm just using live scope to see where the good grass is so like right now turning okay if i turn this way i can tell there's a nice point out that direction that unless I got on my big engine and used, you know, side scan and, and spent some time doing it, I would not be able to tell that there's a good area out there. So it, uh, it just, I don't know, to me, it, it saves me a lot of time. It allows me to dissect bodies of water really quickly. And I mean, for, for that, I'm, I'm really grateful. So I'm, I'm not going to harp on it. I'm also not going to become a full-blown live scoper. I'm not going to just use live scope stare at it all the time, go to lakes. I mean, when I went to Ivy, of course, that was, and caught my share lunker, that was a, a live scoping thing where you, you didn't make a cast unless you saw a fish. But man, I, I use it all, it's such a helpful tool just to help you dissect bodies of water faster. And I stand by that uh, every day. I, I will go to my grave defending live scope at least the way that I use it. So I felt like that needed to be said because you're. I'm sure I'm going to, pop out to a deeper grass line. And I'm not gonna make a, a cast out there unless I pan and I see a good looking little clump of grass. Cause that helps me get my lure in places that most likely have a fish a lot faster. Like the only reason I pulled out the walking bait right now is because I saw 
this hump right down there. So sue me, you know, if I want to be a more efficient angler. It's an awesome technology. And I got my hook stuck. I got my hook stuck because I'm talking about live scope. Nobody wants to hear that. That was, that was the Lord saying, Tyler, shut up. And oh my goodness, a bass boat. There's another, there's another stinking bass boat out here on a Tuesday. I kid you not, this may be the first time ever in all my years of fishing up in Minnesota that like on a weekday, there's been somebody else that bass fishes out on the water. That never happens. There's plenty of walleye boats in the, in the like, but bass boats, nah. Ain't never a bass boat. And it looks like he might be going to the ramp. So if so, good. Get him out of here. Go back, go back home. Like, like I see some fish down there, but I, I highly doubt they're even bass. Yeah, yeah, they, they ran away. They're bluegill. They are bluegill. And it's time for a new clip. Where are you at? I'm seeing better grass out here than I am closer to the reeds. Hmm. Wonder why. Wonder why it's growing better out towards the main lake than it is closer to shore. That's usually not the case, usually the opposite. All right, I'm gonna go down another 50 yards with the vibrating jig on the edge. Obviously don't need to be in the pencil reeds. The bass are not there. Maybe a few are, but I think the better fish especially are on the edge. And the Thunder Cricket is getting the job done. Getting it done, son. Zinger. <laughs> Not a bass, no. Grass. Grass, man. This grass is sticky. Very sticky. It's probably some of that American pond weed. I'm gonna keep saying that out loud to reiterate to myself what it is. American pondweed. Pondweed. Weed in the pond. I would almost call that American pond leaf. Like I don't I don't I don't really consider that weedy. Weedy is like a gnarly looking, you know, scraggly thing. That's weedy to me. But they named it, not me. Should have let me name it. I would have given it something cool. I would have said, I would have said, this is, uh, this is flat, flat green boy. That's what I would have named it. And that bass boat went all the way over in the corner and fishing near the ramp. I think they wanted to get out of the wind. That's one of the only, uh, the whole bank over here is gonna be non-windy. But I don't, I just don't think they're gonna catch much up there. Because I, I trolled around and it's, it looks too shallow. What do I know? I'm just a kid with a dream. I'm just a kid. Kid with a dream. Okay, man, this is frustrating. Where'd they go? Go a little deeper with the scope. Scope of it. I really want to find a good grass line. You know, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna I'm gonna troll out. I'm gonna troll out and I'm gonna pitch around a football jig, which is kind of a Minnesota thing. Believe it or not, they pitch a football jig, <laughs> not, not a uh, right. I mean, you can you can throw the, the stealth fighter and stuff, but a lot of the times they're pitching a football jig and then kind of shaking it in the grass for deeper fish. I'm just trying to find a deeper grass edge, which I will show you guys what it looks like on live scope when I find it. But I'm not, I'm not seeing it. Yeah, I'm not seeing a deep grass line. I'm just seeing lots of stalks, which I don't like. I want to see a definitive edge. 
I want to see an edge rusher rush the passer. I'm not seeing nothing out here. Holy cow. Get the trolling motor on 18. This new powerful move is crazy. I love it. Really powerful, cuts through grass. Heck of a motor. Where is this edge? My goodness. I guess there's a nice clump out there, but that's not, that's not what I was going for. I wanna find the edge of the grass. Maybe this lake just doesn't have a good one. Holy cow, another boat. What, why is this boat so, this lake so popular? My goodness. So many boats on this lake. Not what I was expecting. Again, on a, on a Tuesday, you normally find nobody out here. Well, let me tell you, there was, there was somebody. There's a handful of somebody's. It makes me think there's a second ramp out here because there's another bass boat. My gosh. Wild. And my lighting, once again, this is just so frustrating. It's just, it's just blown out. Don't like how the clouds are so, the clouds are so hot. All right. Now I know this is probably, probably boring y'all, but this is, this is part of the process. Like I got to fish around a little bit deeper Find out if I'm missing anything. There's a fish right here. Now this, now this is individual fish scope in here. It's an individual piece of grass here. Got a fish sitting on it and he didn't even follow it down. So when that happens, most likely not even a bass. That's a, that's a crappie. Individual bass on a piece of structure. That's a crappie. And got grass on there. Again, just looking around. There's a clump of clump of bluegill right down there. A lot of bluegill. Are there any bass in them? That's always the question. Shake a jig. Shake a billy. Shake a billy jig. Don't think so. Don't think there's any bass there. Like this is this is the best grass line. I'm getting here. And it's, it's not even a line, it's just kind of the grass gets more and more sparse. Don't like that. I don't like it at all. Party every day. See this though is where the, the whole graphing would really help. Because I mean, I spend if I spend an hour out here on all the points, I could really find what area has the best underwater cabbage and coontail, you know, point. Which again, is just like an above water point, but it's underwater. That was dumb. That sounded patronizing. Y'all aren't dumb. I was just saying what an underwater point is. That you can't exactly see on the map, but it's where the grass, the grass grows better and whatnot. And man, I'm just not, I'm not seeing that here. And again, I use, I use live scope to try to find that quicker. I truly think like the best electronic setup is a mixture of live scope and 360. But your boy's trying to get with Garmin. So I ain't using no 360. Potty every day. All right, I'm sick of this. I'm sick, I'm sick of these fish not eating this. So we're gonna go back up shallow with the vibrating jig. Fish the old fashioned way. Just chunk and wind, baby. Chunk and wind. And if I don't get anything in the next 100 yards, I'm gonna crank the engine up and go fish some different point elsewhere. But I do like that I see better aquatic vegetation on live scope up here. Seems like it started to grow better, closer to the, the pencil reeds. And really this can be what fall is a lot of the time. It is just 
you find a few fish, catch a few right in a row, bang, 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 and then, and then nothing for a little while. And y'all are seeing it live. Yeah, I'm wondering if we got some kind of some kind of tournament out here. I got Tuesday nighter or something, and guys are pre-fishing because I'm not seeing I'm not seeing a reason why we have so many boats out here. Let's do let's do comment challenge at the next the next fish as long as it's over two pounds. If I catch a rinky dinker, we will not do the comment challenge, but. Any nice fish, and we will. I'm liking this area. I like the way it looks. It's got good depth. But where are the bass? It's fast and furious on that point. Grass. You let it sink for a few more seconds. Get it down to the bottom. I'm not gonna lie, though, my fingers are kind of cold. My fingers are kind of are kind of chilly. I'm sure y'all have noticed over the years, if you've watched, I don't do a whole lot of overhand casts. I do a lot of side casts, a lot of roll casts. That's just the way my Body works after playing disc golf and ultimate frisbee for so long. I've just been doing so much right arm, you know, flicking movement that that kind of a cast is just pretty comfortable for me. Also seems to make more sense like aerodynamically. That's not the right word. Maybe it is. Where like I'm bringing the lure in, it's coming like this, and I bring it up and swing it. I think going above my head would not look right. Like if I was to go like this, I guess, I don't know. Kind of doing it similar. Now there was no other boats at the boat ramp, like no trailers. So makes me think a lot of these boats are on the water here. People live here. And if that's the case, they obviously know where the fish are. So they're probably sitting on all the good spots. There's a bass boat sitting on a point over there that I bet is a little honey hole. Matter of fact, I'm gonna zoom out on my map here, see if I can tell. I mean, mapping is not great, so. I can't exactly tell what the point looks like. Let's get a new clip. New clip. This is not, not very, Oh, that's the word I'm looking for. Satisfying. Like I wanna, I wanna find more fish grouped up, catch four or five in a row. But also I'm not really following my own advice of hitting the high percentage stuff. I'm just, it's just now dawning on me that I'm just kind of fishing. So yeah, yeah, well, one more cast. I see a nice point, nice point of cattails. If nothing there, I will pull up the big motor or pull up the trolling motor. And, uh, oh my gosh, oh dang. <laughs> yeah, I got something, folks. I got something, let me let me show you. Good grief, this is not a, not a bath, if you couldn't tell. I got myself a big old slimy critter. But I'm gonna keep the boat right here in case this is not the, oh gosh, hello. You gonna get in the water? Thank you. All right. Hey, fish came off on his own. I didn't do that. I didn't do that. In case there's more game fish in this area. If there's a pike here, maybe there's a bass. Maybe, maybe. I did say, I did say comment challenge on the next thing over two pounds, but you guys know that I meant bass. Cause that, that guy was definitely over two pounds but not the species I'm after. All right, if that was a bass, I would stay, but it was not. So I'm gonna put the 
put the rods away on the front deck here. Pull the pull the move up. We're gonna make a make a move. Yeehaw. Oh, come on, there we go. Grab this camera here. Check, 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 check an audio, we're good. Till we find a place to fish. Alrighty. Put my camera back here. I wish I could just stay at this angle all day. Looks gorgeous. Move is down and I'm gonna grab the football jig. Cause I, I stopped I stopped way off this point. I just wanted to see if I could find a better grass edge. Like there's a fish. There's a fish down there. If he comes up to look at it, it's a bass. If not, it's a walleye. And it's a walleye. <laughs> he didn't want nothing to do with it. And that's also the thing about live scoping. There's so much stuff in the water, so much junk. That is not that is not bass. And so it's like, oh, every fish you see is a bass and you're gonna catch it. It's like it's like it's like a fishing video game, man. Sometimes. The majority of the time, no. No, it's not. It is not a video game. If it's a video game, it's a video game that I want to return to GameStop because it's a tough game. You can't, I can never beat the final boss. I beat the final boss one time. And it's because I button I button smashed or button mashed, whatever you gamers call it. That's that's the only way I caught a Sherlunker, because I got lucky. I got lucky and I button mashed. Had no had no. I mean, I had an understanding of the body of water, but it wasn't like I was a a pro out there. I will I will admit that. I just happened to stop on a really good spot, and the fish was in the mood to eat. So we're in 15 feet of water. Okay, okay. Here's a better grass edge. There we go. Let me show you guys. So right there, 75 feet out, is a nice edge of the grass. Looks like it goes from grass to nothing. So, cast my football jig out there. Again, I'm not seeing individual fish. I'm just using it to help me find a better place to cast. A good high percentage place to cast my cricket. That's all I'm doing. And then I look around, I'm like, oh, you know what? I like that cast. That's all I'm doing. Man, today just feels like a top water day to me. Even though it's a little sunny, really feels like a top water day. I feel like I, I feel like I, if there's a small mouth in here, he's gonna come up and eat a a plopper. That's the vibe that I get. Another bass boat? Where are these boats coming from? What the heck? I come out here so I can get some, you know, untouched fish. I guess not. Guess this lake's got quite a few danglers, as Lake Fork guy would say. Shoot, man. Shoot, dang. Shoot a monkey. Shoot a monkey in the butt. Come on. Big big offshore largey in the grass. Pitching around. Gosh darn jig. Oh, a little, no, grass. Little uh, sponsor update. Outcast Tackle is no longer selling. We're not no longer selling. They're no longer manufacturing my favorite jig. I don't, I, we don't know why, it just didn't, it didn't sell very well. And so if you want what I think is the best football jig out there, I'm not just like saying that because it's a sponsor thing. I love this jig. And so if you want to pick up some, of course it'll support Outcast, but they're not even making them anymore. So I'm just telling you guys, so you can get your hands on some of the best jigs out there before they are not manufactured anymore. I guess the, the Northern market doesn't throw enough football jigs and the southern market just had their own their own brands it liked. So, bummer. That's how business goes. Outcast has got to make decisions and they're going to produce other jigs. We've got a jig coming out with them 
a new swim jig, I think. New swim bait heads. Uh, I'm, I'm hopefully designing a skipping jig with them soon. We haven't come to an agreement on the design, but I want to make a lead skipping jig. And some of those things take uh, priority over a football jig that didn't sell very well. As sad as it is. Now, am I still going to throw this football jig? You bet your bottom dollar. I got myself quite a few more of these things. Because I think they're awesome. And I'll leave them. I'll leave a link to it down below if Tack Warehouse has any left. And snag them up, baby, because they're, they're good. Man, nothing in this offshore grass. Confusing. Very confusing. Kind of scrambling here. Not sure what to do. Gonna go back to vibrating jig. And this bank here looks a lot less grassy, even down there on live scope. I'm not seeing near as much grass. So the only reason I'm going shallow here is to hit this uh, hit this dock and see if there's a grass line up, up, up by the bank. Because I truly believe these fish want to be shallow. They want to feed up before the winter time, which is, which is hitting pretty soon here. Minnesota fall comes quick and leaves quick. <laughs> and we got, we got lighting again. It's okay though, it's fine. I think these sunglasses have a pretty strong tint to them, so I keep thinking the lighting is probably worse than it is. There we go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nice one. Nice one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, they're shallower. Okay. It's a skinny boy. He's got a big head on this fish and a skinny body. I think it's skinny at least. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's go. Yep, I was right. Very odd for Minnesota. That's wild. I mean, like, very, very skinny bass. Thunder Cricket to the face. Still a nice one, but not nearly the size quality that I'm used to. Okay, so I found shallow grass. I can, I can tell by just looking at the bank, uh, sorry, in the water, that uh, it's darker, which means you've got some vegetation. And so I get up shallow, got vegetation, first cast into an area, and we got a bass. Chest mount looks good. Let's do it again. Cast over there, see if we got any more. I'd love to just load the boat. Load the boat, baby. The grass is kind of sticky. Sticky, sticky grass. This is probably gonna be the pattern the whole day. You know, now that I've caught a few doing it, shallow cabbage and coontail mixed with a thunder cricket. And I, I, I mean, the tungsten one is really good. I know it's a more expensive chatterbait style bait, but I love the head, it's smaller, it's really sensitive, kind of like a lot of people my age. Oh, felt like a fish, not grass. And it really stays down in the water column better than a lead vibrating jig. All right, gonna skip under this dock here. Hello. Nothing? The only dock in the area? Surprising. How about a brush pile up shallow? Nothing there either. All right. It's just gonna be a it's gonna be a cover water type day, I feel. Oh, hey, comment challenge. Totally forgot about that. The comment challenge for today. You know, last time you guys really had good, there's one, there's one. Hey, let's go. You guys had really good responses. And so I'm gonna do another, another sentimental type one. Come on now, comment below. Tell me about the the, the, the most important fish you lost so far. So if you're a tournament angler, tell me about 
you know, the, the big the big kicker fish you lost in the tournament and how it, it would have cost it, it cost you not only money but also you know the points race. Uh, if you're just a recreational fisherman, man, maybe you had uh, you're bringing your son and your daughter out trying to catch their first bass and they hook into a giant and they lose it and your kid's crying and you're sad because you know the euphoria of the moment was there and you're you're thinking in your head counting your chickens per se that like we're gonna have an awesome picture hang it up on the wall all our friends are gonna come over and and you know see my son's my son's fish he caught and then the fish is fish gets off you know that'd be that'd be a, a big loss for sure so comment below and then potentially if, if if let's say you don't have one that really like means a lot to you comment a big fish you lost and then what you learned from that experience so maybe you learned that you need to sharpen your hooks or you learned that uh, your hook set was too weak and you just didn't get a good hook into them. Maybe you were, you were reeling too fast and you just reeled all the way up to the tip and the fish broke your rod tip. So either what that fish meant to you when you lost it or what you learned from the experience. I'll kind of give you guys mine. My, my biggest fish I've ever lost, so it's, a, it's a pretty cool story actually. Uh, the state championship of Texas, my, my senior year, fishing with my buddy Clark Manis. He was my high school partner. And man, we, I, I went and pre, it's, it's during spring break in Texas. That's when the state championship was. And uh, on Lake LBJ. And if you know anything about LBJ in March, they're spawning everywhere. And so I love bed fishing. I still do. I went out there three or four days in a row. And I mean, I marked like, 70 fish over three pounds and like 15 over five on beds and I was like man we're feeling good I got a lot of stuff it took 30 pounds though to win the previous year so I knew we needed a really good day we get out there a lot of our fish are gone but a decent amount are still there and, and we uh I think we 25 I think it was pounds we had and I, I just stop on this random grass line that I think I'd caught some fish out before, but I heard from a buddy that big fish like to be there. And there's three buoys that were sitting on, uh, it, it kind of showed the grass line. There, the buoys were really for jet skis and boats to tie onto. They kind of anchored down buoys. But that's also where the drop happened to be with where the grass edge stopped. And I had a big 14 inch man's jelly worm that I was casting up shallow around bedding areas on, on retaining walls and basically reeling it like a snake and the fish would come off the bed and they would show themselves. So I had that on like 65 pound braid and I didn't have, it was only 10 minutes left in the tournament. We had 25 pounds or whatever it was. I didn't have time to re-rig a fluorocarbon combo with the big worm. So I just put two split shot weights uh, somewhere near the nose of the worm just to get it down there on that grass line. Again, kind of last ditch effort. Never never caught a fish there before, I don't think. And I hook into a giant. And it's fighting and I'm dogging it. And I, I believe, yeah, I'm on this side of the boat fighting it. And it jumps on this side. And I'm talking like 12, 13, 14 pounder, huge bass. Would it, if I landed it, would have won us the state championship. And my, my belly is grumbling. Hopefully y'all can hear that. And so it jumps, spits the lure, gets off. And I mean, I crumble on the front deck. I'm like, no, people are hearing me scream. And Clark and I both will tell you to this day, we remember a popping cork in the mouth of that fish. When it jumped and thrashed, there was a popping cork in its mouth. And for those of y'all who don't know, popping cork is used for a lot of saltwater fish, um, but also some catfish with a, either a live piece of live bait or a piece of cut bait or dead bait. And you basically pop the cork and it causes commotion and then the fish come and eat the bait that's behind the popping cork. And so I'm guessing what happened is that somebody was popping for something and a giant bass came and ate the you know piece of bluegill. And of course broke off the popping cork where the line was tied to the cork. And then the fish was just kind of swimming around down there with a popping cork in its mouth. And when I got my, my worm back to me after losing that fish, I noticed that the hook was still, my, the hook was still in the worm. 
So I never actually had that fish hooked, but you know what was gone? The two split shot weights. They were both gone off of the worm. And so I think what happened was, is that big fish must have been doing, you know, circles down there around my worm. The, the line and the popping cork around its, around its mouth got stuck on my line and I set the hook and the, the split shot weights caught, caught that line and I was fighting a, a 12, 13 pounder from a popping cork. So that's, that's kind of my, my, my story. Now, what did I learn from that? Nothing really. I mean, I did everything right. The fish just, fish was never hooked. And to be honest, I'm not even sure if the fish ever even ate my worm. Because if it ate my worm, I would have set the hook and gotten the, gotten the hook in its mouth. So I, I, I really think what happened is the fish was just checking it out. And I was fighting the popping cork the whole time. So that's a long-winded story. Maybe more than you, uh, <laughs> more than you bargained for. But I want to hear something like that. You probably can't type a comment that, that long. But I want to hear about your, uh, your saddest fish loss. And man, we got some good coontail on this shallow flat here. Just scattered, scattered coontail clumps. I also kind of feel like this area is a, is a topwater area. Matter of fact, I am, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna grab the, I'm gonna grab the walking bait. I'm gonna go back and check my lighting. Oh, we're great. Oh, it looks beautiful now. And I'm gonna fish a walking bait over these coontail clumps. Is this the smartest move? Considering I'm catching them on the, on the walking, on the uh, chatterbait? Probably not. But this is more of a desire. I would like to catch one on a walking bait. And I think I can. Come on now. Come on now, eat. Just one fish and I'll put it down. That's all I want is one. All you need is love. Love is all you need. Come on now. I've been impressed with the quality of fish out of here so far. I mean, it's, it's kind of like most other Minnesota lakes. A lot, of, a lot of two to two and a half pounders. It's rare that a lake is full of fours, which is a bummer. I'd like to catch more fours, but can't win them all. No, you can't win them all. That's, my, that's a song I made up called Can't Win Them All. Come on, eat it, buddy. Eat it, shallow bass. Now, you know what? This is not the proper bait. I'm gonna get a, uh, I'm gonna get a plopper. Where's my plopper at? There they are. The walking bait is just, it's catching its, uh, it's catching its hooks too much. So, I'm gonna get a top water plopper. I got the full 130 size. I do like 110 better, but I don't have any 110s, so 130 it is. Now, speaking of 110, old Mock Nation, Mock Baits, we're, uh, we're coming out with a bigger patroller. So that, that's our plopper style bait. Uh, we're, get, we're having a 110 size come out soon. So you're going to see me throw in a lot of that. We, we, we started off with a 90, and man, I just, I mean, unless you're like smallmouth fishing or like a creek, the 90 just doesn't throw enough water for me. Doesn't, doesn't grab enough. So I'm glad we're coming out with a 110. I would also like a 130. That's the one I've got right here. Not a sponsored product, but sometimes, sometimes you gotta do that. Sometimes you gotta throw something because you know it's the right lure for the situation. Because the, the 90 patroller is just, it, it would not plop enough in this chop here. Just wouldn't. All right, give me some bass, please. Give me something. I don't ask for much. I'm a simple man. 
I just want a bass on my plopper. <laughs> oh, we got a we got a little patch of cabbage coming up here. Shallow, I see it. Mmm. Man. If I'm gonna catch one, it's gonna be on that cast right there. Beautiful. Slowly plop over the area. Come on. Come on. Gosh darn, man. Didn't catch one. Maybe it's a little too shallow. I hesitate to even say that because I'm not sure if that's a if that's even a thing. Too shallow for a Minnesota bass, but that's not where I've gotten bites today, so I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna guess that is a thing today. <laughs> What a bomb. Meow. Come on. Extra long cast. 50 pound braid. Give me some of that. Give me some of that giant. Some of that spoluche on a four pounder. <laughs> Oh yeah. Unless I see way more coontail clumps, I'm probably gonna put this down after this cast. I just get so excited. I wanna catch one. I wanna catch one on it. It's all I ask. Yeah, I don't think it's happening. At least not, not on this spot. Come on, grab the reel. Gosh dang it, thank you. All right, back to the chatterbait, the chatter wagon. I'm gonna go get a, I'm gonna get a new clip going here, folks. What is out here? What is out here? Probably not a bass, but we're gonna check out. I see a little grass edge, a little grass clump with some dots, but I think they're all bluegill. I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure they're all bluegill. Come on now. What are you? What are you, huh? Yeah, they're all. They're all bluegill, I think. Casting my lure down here. Yeah. No, not bass. Too small. Dun, 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 dun. One thing about having a 16 inch screen is that you kind of got to reframe in your mind what you think a bass looks like on it. Especially if coming from a 10 or a 9 or a 12 even. A, a bluegill looks like a giant bass. So you really got to actually be looking for much bigger marks than you're probably used to to look for a bass. And man, I just made a cast over a beautiful grass patch with bluegill all around it. Sometimes the bass don't follow the rule books, you know? They're supposed to be around the, around the forage. They're supposed to want some porridge. With a slice of orange. But no, they don't. All right. Bazinga. And somehow it just got calm. Like I, got, I got on this point because I thought it'd be windy. But for some reason, it just got calmer. Hmm, I just saw a bass um, chase my vibrating jig. So I'm gonna cast out there, see what we got. See what we got. I say bass. Probably not bass. Probably not 
probably bluegill. Yeah, yeah, those would go. They're gills, and I got lots of grass. I'm a football jig. Yeah. Not the right time for that bait. Way over the point. And I think it's a shallow point with lots of grass. Which makes me feel good about this spot. Oh, the, the, the boat over there either has a fish or, I don't know. I think it's mostly old guys out here fishing. I've seen, I've seen a lot of boats today, but not a whole lot of guys standing. A lot of guys sitting, sitting peepaw style. Probably sitting peepaw style, dragging a worm. Like Bill Dance, fishing for a living. Bill Dance. Man, there's some fish out there. I just don't think they're bass. Dang. Don't think they are bass. Well, you know, one thing I, I, I told you guys was probably gonna happen is that the fish would be schooled up in the fall. And now that I look back at all my catches, almost all my catches so far, I was kind of right. With the exception of those last ones that weren't really on like a specific uh, point. All of my fish have been relatively together. I get two here, two there. It's a little bit shallower on this, or deeper on this edge here. I'm actually gonna get the swim jig back out because I wanna cast it in and around this uh, these cattails. A swim jig bite's a lot of fun. If y'all have not thrown a swim jig, you need to. You need to chunk around a swim jig a little bit in your in your ponds. It's a it's a jig that doesn't take a whole lot of work. You swim it. You swim it. I give I give it a little bit of variance as I'm swimming it. A little bit of stop and go. <laughs> Fishing for a living. I really want to catch a four pounder. Like if I can catch a four out here, I'll feel really good about the day. And I'll still feel good about it even if I don't catch a four. But it's kind of my goal now. Now that I've caught some twos, Maybe one pushing three. Really want to get a four. <laughs> Basically fishing right now the, the most pointy looking point <laughs> on this lake. You can see from the drone shot that it's a point. It is a rock point. Man-made rip. I say man-made. Actually, I kind of forgot that Minnesota lakes are mostly natural. So actually, I don't know if it's man-made. It might be a like a real rip-rap rock point that's got cattails growing on it. But they also might have put those rocks. I don't know. That don't look real to me. That don't look real enough to me. All right kind of bear in on the point here. I'm gonna go farther out. Come on. Gosh dang it. You got some grass. Oh wait. <laughs> Picked up the wrong rod. No wonder it wasn't chattering. It's a football jig. No wonder. I was I was out there yanking on it thinking why is this thing not chattering? Well silly. You got the wrong bait. Grab the wrong bait, son. It also looks like it might drop. Hmm. Because I cannot see. Yeah, I think we got a steep drop here. If that's the case, your boy's getting a football jig, son. 
You boys gonna throw a football jug on that edge. On that edge rusher. Two, three. Let it fall about three seconds. Oh, I got too much, too much speed going on. Yeah, we got a we got a pack of bluegill right here. This, this I think they're bluegill. Yep. <laughs> Whenever you throw in a pack of twenty fish, and zero of them eat your bait, yeah, it's not a bass. <laughs> Usually, I say that, and then I'm gonna s smoke a giant in a school. But for the most part. And wow, we, gosh, there's one. There's one on the edge, on the edge, on the point. Who could guess? Who could guess? Oh gosh, oh, sorry, buddy. Why'd you have to flail like that? He said, I wanna be shown to the big camera. My goodness, stop it, stop it. I'm trying to help you. You helped me, and now I'm helping you. There he is, nice fish. All right, well, that's good to know. Nope. I almost fall down. That is a fish on the edge. And we got a we got a very steep drop and edge right here. I'm gonna spin the boat around here in a second. Once I clean my boat deck up, it looks like a mess. Alright, let's get this thing cleaned up. Get the plopper out of here, get the swim jig. I'm gonna put this down. So I grab the football jig. And I'm gonna go deeper with the screen and do a full little loop here. Probably make one cast while I loop. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna promise there's fish on the deeper edge, but if I got one on the very top, and it's a very, I mean, this is the steepest, it's the steepest point I have seen yet. I'm, I don't know, I've just got a, got a feeling there's bass here. Watching my jig fall down the edge. Shake, shake, shake. Shake your football. Shake your football jig. Hmm. Where is the best looking edge? Nice edge that way. Where did my spot lock button go? Uh-oh, there it is. I still haven't installed my anchor lock buttons for the move. And so I got them loose down there. Luckily they're heavy enough that they're not gonna blow out of the boat. But that's also very dumb of me to not do that. Again, monkey see, monkey, monkey don't do. Is that a bass? No, grass. Let it sink while I start a new clip. Now, I don't like, if I'm being honest, the type of grass that I'm fishing on this point. It's not coontail. It's something stringy. And so I'm not gonna spend much more time here. Just one more cast here on this edge. And I'm only gonna work a tiny bit. I see a dock I wanna hit, because I love hitting docks. Uh, actually, you know what? Yeah, I'm gonna buzz down this bank really fast. There's another, another reed point I wanna fish. And then I think I'm literally just gonna hop point to point to point, because that seems like the best high percentage idea. So. Gonna quickly switch between all these lures. Swim jig, vibrating jig football jig. It's a jig day. It's a jig kind of day. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, ba, bum. I'll, I'd like it to also be a topwater kind of day, but it's not the feeling I get.
I need to go faster. There's not enough stuff here worth fishing slow. Like we got, we got good, we got good grass. I'm just not a fan of the lack of wind. Sometimes though, these kind of lakes, the docks are no good. I would not be surprised if on these next, oh, got him, got him. On these next few docks, I don't catch one. Yeah, nothing there. Speed my way around these pads. They're just, these pads over here are just too shallow. Don't really have a whole lot underneath them. And if the fish have better grass that all the bluegill are in to sit on, why would they be up here? Like I, all, all the time I'll see, you know, or I'll, I'll post on Instagram a picture of lily pads and I'm like, hmm, and I put the frog emoji. But if I'm being honest, the frog is not the right choice a lot of the time and the, neither are the pads. Now, I, I, the reason why I'm still fishing shallow right now is because I saw this group of pads and we've got, they, it's a different type because we've got a lot of stems sticking up. And again, bass just like different things. And so I'm gonna fish this little edge of pads here just because it's different. Different type of pads we got. Move your swim jig. I just want to have a bait. Right in the middle of the pads. Pull back, my line goes. Oh gosh. That's fun. That is fun. Fun, fun, until your daddy takes the T-bird away. Probably a lot of people watching this video that didn't understand that reference just now. I'm, I'm barely old enough to really even understand that reference. But I heard that song growing up. Not sure where, but I did. And it changed me. I'm a changed man. I couldn't even tell you who that song's by though, to be honest. All right, I'm gonna catch one, right? Oh gosh, what a bad cast, dang it. I'm gonna say right here. All right, I'm gonna catch one <laughs> right there. Come on now, come on now. What, what? Are you kidding me? Lame, lame. Okay, I'm gonna buzz us really, really fast. Let's go speed 20. Fix my trailer here. I don't like anything I'm seeing right here. It is just flat bottom, not even good grass. You know, I'm gonna go deeper. I'm gonna get deeper. Uh, is it this real? Yeah. And really slow roll a vibrating jig. There's a fish out here. I don't know what it is though. I'm getting way too close to it. Looks like I got a backlash. <laughs> Alright, I got distracted. That's what live scope will do to you. Live scope will distract you. I'm really just trying to get to this next point up here. Not even really concerned about what I'm fishing right here. Daddy takes the T-bird away. Ooh, fun, 
having fun till your daddy takes the taper away. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There ain't no bass in this open water. Why am I even casting? I don't know. Let myself drift. I'm just going point to point now. And especially if I hit, I mean, like it's possible I don't catch one on this point, but if I try one more and I don't get one, then we don't have, we don't have a pattern probably. But up to this point, man, most points that have good grass have had a bass on them. So I'm pretty confident in that trend continuing. I'd love it if I could go super shallow, catch them on a frog, but I just don't think that's a thing today. I think I gotta stay out here, chunk and wind. I'm gonna power pull here, make a few few casts before I, you know, get too much on this point. What a beautiful, beautiful day. I'd say I'd like it to be warmer, but you know what? I kind of enjoy the fact that it's not warmer. A little bit of no sniffle. Trees are changing. Falls in the air, man. Not gonna complain. In a few days, I head back down to the barren, barren wasteland of Dallas, Texas. I say barren wasteland, it's not that bad. It's not that ugly. I like Texas. Like it a lot. And we got some grass on that cast, and I like it because it's coontail and it's healthy. So I like that. We have what I want on this point. Big fan of that. Now, will there be a bass on the point? That is the question. I can also tell that it's a little bit shallower because the same retrieve that I've been doing is resulting in getting a little bit of grass on my lure. So not gonna let the lure sink at all as soon as it hits the water, start the retrieve and keep my rod tip up. Hope y'all have been enjoying. If you have, hit that subscribe button. I'm gonna put a, I'll put a graphic on the screen right now, a little screenshot showing how many folks watched the last uncut that were not subscribed. And if that's you, join the team, man. Or man or woman, if you're watching. I don't got a whole lot of girls, but I got a few. I'd be happy to have you on the team, learning and growing as an angler along with us, all you guys. I love the fact that this is my job. It's hard sometimes. I know people don't, people don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear fishing is hard, but man, I'm on day seven in a row of fishing and I'm, I'm getting tired. Got a few more, few more days to go. I got a lot of video ideas. After I finish this on this uncut here, I'm gonna go power pull down somewhere and film some sit down videos. Talking about left hand versus right hand retrieve bait caster. I might do one on a little Japanese technique. So it's, it's a lot of fun, but it's also work. But I'm grateful I wouldn't change, wouldn't change anything. You guys have been awesome. I wouldn't have a job if y'all weren't watching, so please keep, please keep watching. If you want to, if you want to see videos, you got to watch them. You got to click those links. Got to shop for merch. I say gotta. You don't have to do anything. I'm grateful if you're here. But if you like what you're seeing, it'd mean the world if you would help out in whatever way you can. I'm just so grateful. I'm not grateful, these gosh darn, as Dion Sanders says, gosh darn, these gosh darn fish are not eating a topwater. Which, I mean, I'm, I'm surprised. I'm surprised that I'm on a big point here and I'm not getting any on the plopper. I wonder if the, the cold front knocking the water temp down six, seven, eight degrees 
change their mood towards top water a little bit. It's possible. Josh, there's one. There's one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Power pull down. Water ski you in. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Yes. Yes. I got one. I got one on the plopper. Hey, hey. Look at that. Oh, no, no. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't get me stuck. That's a fish right there, folks. Beautiful. Come on. That's what happens when the big, big plopper gets them. My goodness, get pliers, Tyler. Stop using your hands. I got him in the side. I apologize, buddy. I snagged him. There we go. Thank you, friend. See ya. Wouldn't want to be. Actually, I do want to be ya, because being, being a bass would be fun. Chasing bluegill. Eating lures. Although I, I like to think that I'd be smart enough not to eat a lure. But that right there, folks, is what I'm talking about. I got one on top water. As I was talking about, them not eating it. So obviously you just you just gotta get around them. My general thoughts about Minnesota is if uh, and really northern fisheries, if they're there, they're gonna eat. So if you're not catching fish, probably not around them. And that's not the case in every body of water, especially not down south, but it's a good rule to live by. If you're not getting bit, go somewhere else. This battery here is about to die, so uh, let's get a new battery. Okay. Well, that was fun. Finally got one on the top water. Just as I had thought, man. A point. A point is a point is a point. That's just the truth. Man, if it is a transitional time of year, fish the points. Fish the humps. Fish the drop-offs. Don't go down just random nothing banks. Could you catch a could you catch an oddball fish on them? Yes, of course. But you gotta understand based on the seasons where the fish are gonna be. And I, I know that takes a long time. You know, as a as a beginning fish, beginner fisherman, you're not gonna understand all about the seasons, all about the the water temperatures and what the bass do. But the the, the more you can learn about that, you're gonna narrow down on your bodies of water, your ponds and your lakes a lot faster. A lot, lot faster. And I gotta, the setting I gotta change here on the camera. Okay, we're good. All right, last cast here with this. Obviously not a whole lot of fish right there, at least that wanna bite top water. But with this little chop we got on the water, this is really the only effective topwater. Okay. Heck yeah. Love it. Always worth a cast over a point. If it's if it's that time of year, you know. If it's post spawn, summer, fall, topwater cast over a shallow point is a hundred percent worth your time every time. Just making you know four or five little fan casts over the point. You'd be surprised how many extra fish throughout the day you can catch by doing that. And now as I'm still power pulled down, I will make some casts with the vibrating jig. And if I catch one on the vibrating jig in the same little patch that I assume is up here of grass, then I'll, I'll also cast a drop shot or a worm. Yep, there's one, there's one. Let's go, let's go. They on the points, baby. They on the points. Ice cream cone. Get you a scoop, folks. Get you a scoop. Watch the scoop, my friend. Thank you. Let's go. They're around here, baby. They're around. These boys around here. Sipping that ice cold beverage. Da -ba -da -da. Talking about trucks. Running them red dirt roads out, kicking up dust. The boys around here, sending our prayer to the man upstairs. Eat 
in the backwoods we crank. We don't want to catch no stank. I want to fill, want to fill, want to fill the, li the tank, the live well tank. I've had people uh, ask me recently when I'm going to drop my next parody. Because it's been three years. I think it's been three years or two years. And man, it's just, they take so much time. Now, I, I know I missed out on the opportunity of a parody this summer. Because the whole Taylor Swift's tour was going massive and making billions of dollars. Social media was all about Taylor Swift this summer. So I should have done another Taylor Swift one. And to be honest, it might not be too late. Because she's got the movie coming out from her tour. And then I think she'll drop a few of her own albums. Don't ask me how I know this. I have a wife. So that's how I know these things. Um, she's dropping another one of her, her own where she re-records her songs. So maybe another Taylor Swift one. Just you know, thinking about how social media works and I gotta pick an artist that you know they're doing something that it's not just a, a song that sounds cool and the parody would be funny that's where I messed up on the the Brad Paisley and I'll be catching it it still did decent 40,000 views I think but not nearly the 21 Pilots one or the Taylor Swift one because those are just bigger artists they're more worldwide. They got more media behind them. I gotta, I gotta pick a big old artist. I mean, I could do like Doja Cat or Olivia Rodrigo or something. But Taylor Swift, man, just has way more appeal. So if you can think of any, any parody for me, one of her recent songs, "Cruel." I think "Cruel Summer" was one of them. Um, I would just, I'd have to put some thought behind it. Not sure. It also takes recording time. It's not the easiest to uh, get in a recording studio and record the song itself. And then I also run into the to the issue of I can't monetize it. So so it's fun. It's fun to make a video to make a song that people like. But I mean, if I'm working all this time and I can't make any money off it because Someone's label owns the sound, you know? I don't know. It's hard to... Especially now with a wife and a kid on the way, it's hard to justify doing a lot of things that don't have at least some return on investment. And I guess I'd gain fans, and I would also... The, the, the return might be that my viewers would enjoy my content even more, but I got to make money somehow. And the parodies, the parodies, all, every single one of them, demonetized. Thanks, Universal Music Group. Appreciate it. Not even revenue sharing. That would have been nice. That would have been nice. Well, we've gotten to the ed edge of the point here, and there's uh, there's not much. For grass, I mean, there's, there's a little bit, but it's not nearly as clumpy and delicious as the front side of that point was. So I'm going to keep going around the outside here. When the sun pops up, with my, again, my sunglasses on, I can see based on uh, how the water color changes where the thicker grass is. And I'm going to actually target my casts with live scope, but also where I can see are the the darker more brown areas of water because that's where that's where the grass is growing so if you're not doing that in your body of water if you have if you've got grass and and you can see in the water and you're just making blind casts then i think you be you could be a little more efficient with your time and i'm not seeing what i want to see i'm not <laughs> now I, I probably could have slowed down a little more on that point where I caught those two and thrown a thrown a Texas rig or something. That would have been smart. I should have done that. Oops. Oopsie daisies. 
I also might be able to spin back around and throw upwind and bring my lure back down. But you know what? I don't always make the best decisions. Sometimes I just want to keep moving, catching fish. Even though that might result actually in more, <laughs> in more fish catching. All right, last cast here, and then I got to find another point. Because even though we got good grass here, actually one more after this. This cast is closer to the edge, the outside edge. <laughs> Man, this just this looks so good. I know I keep saying last cast. You gotta make one with the top water, because it, it, we have good clumps all down this whole this whole break here. And this is stuff that I'm seeing with my eyes. I'm not live scoping this. I'm looking in the water and I'm seeing where the grass is, where the drop off is, targeting my cast to those areas. That one there is going over the entire flat from the shallow edge over the top of it and then to the deep edge. I kind of feel aimless though. I don't want to be aimless. I'm going to go. I'm going. Forcing myself. Got a point hop, baby. Just got a fast idle. Keep the trolling motor down. And get myself to the point on the other side. Yeehaw. New clip. Back to the next point. Oh, reminds me, I gotta write down. I think I talked about a drone shot of that point over there. Main rock point, not pint. As if I don't write that down, I'm gonna forget what drone shots I was telling y'all I was gonna get. All right, grandes. Donde estamos? No, that's we. Donde están? Donde están, pescados? Ay! <laughs> I gotta get that song out of my head. Spit. I've only caught one, so I'm not sure what the, uh, like, retrieve should be, you know? Sometimes they'll tell you if they want it straight retrieved. Are they gonna hit it when it's moving? Are they gonna hit it when it stopped? All the time on my walking baits and especially poppers, they hit it right when it stops. Ploppers though, I'm not so sure. Seem to catch, I seem to catch most right, right when I begin the retrieve again from pausing it. Ah. And I got some weeds, got some good healthy grass. That's good to see that this cold front hasn't killed the grass yet. Looks good back there. Hope the wind isn't too bad. And this is exactly why I fish a small lake on a day like today. Because yeah, it's blowing 10 to 15 and I can actually fish. If I was on a big body of water, half of the lake would be just getting thrashed right now. So, that's why I do it. And here comes a bass boat. He's going way faster than you should on this kind of lake. Where's the rush, buddy? Where are you trying to be? Where are you going? Huh. Yeah, he's got a bunch of stickers. He got a bunch of stickers on his on his boat. 
he's a pro, professional. And there goes another one. Okay, so they're buddies. They're for sure buddies. And they're going somewhere. Zinger. Looks like they're staying in the house over there. No idea. Oh, there's like a little lodge down there. Yeah. So I guess this is a little, a little bass honey hole. How about that? Didn't even know. Didn't even know it was any good. That's why I picked it. My friend told me it has bass in it and I said, great. How big? And he said, I don't know. Let's go find out. So I am. I am finding out. Fish around and find out. That's what I always say. I just gotta believe there's another fish on this point. <laughs> Don't break the streak. Come on, point. Don't break the streak. I've got a point. I've got a fish on every point. Don't do it to me. And I'm kind of getting cold. <sighs> I want to get, I want to get another shirt on underneath all this. Kind of chilly. One thing I'm noticing is that there's a lot of high grass on this point. So I'm probably going to actually, after I've done ma making this fan cast here, I'm going to actually move a little farther out that way because this point seems to slope slower. And that's kind of the general direction I take with when I'm fishing a point or just an area is I'll get somewhere, I'll either power pull down or, or spot lock and then cast, 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 move somewhere else, cast, 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 cast. That's what's called fan casting because it's like a fan. Yep, still feeling grass out there. So I'm going to move my way a little farther out. Still technically on the point, but just the edge of the point, the far out edge. We got grass out here, man, gee. A lot of it, goodness. Part of me wants to throw a hybrid hunter just because of how good it is around grass. But I'm catching them on this. I don't know, maybe I should. Maybe I should throw the old hunter. I'm thinking about it. I'm considering it. I'm considering the hunter. Considering doing a little bit of hunting. Vibrating jigs has been good to me so far. And my fingers are getting cold. I kind of want to keep moving. My fingies are cold. Man. Don't make this the first point without a bass. It's no fun. That is no fun. Oh my gosh. Bass right there. Dang it. Gosh, but a three pounder. Dang it, man was literally following my bait in. Shoot. So they're here. Okay. Pattern still holds. Got him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's go. Let's go. There's one. Yes. Ha <laughs> ha. 
And now I don't have to say theoretically pattern holds. Pattern 100% holds, baby. Little guy. That was not the same fish that I just saw. So, makes me think I found a little group of them right here. That'd be nice. That'd be nice. They were a little farther out on the point. But now I've spot locked and I'm gonna make a fan cast around this area. Go this way. There's one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's go. Let's go. Thought you were way bigger <laughs> the way this fish ate. But look, thunder cricket. And it, I mean, like it's, it's down there. Wow. Amazing. She smoked it. We found him, folks. Every point might be a little different in the way the fish position themselves. I have a fish or grass. Grass. Cannot even let this thing fall at all, which is also kind of why I don't want to throw the hybrid hunter. Coontail is hard to rip out of, and the hybrid hunter needs to be ripped out, so I think I might as well, unless I go the shallow version. Actually, yeah, I'm going to tie it up. I'm tying it up. Enough talk. A few more casts with this. I'm tying it up. This is cool. I love this. I love this. Yeah, I need a new trailer. This bad boy, bad boy's coming off my Thunder Cricket a lot. So, get a new trailer, but first, let me take a selfie. First, I'm gonna get uh, a hybrid hunter. Now, for those of y'all who don't know what the hybrid hunter is, first off, how dare you? And second off, it's a, it's a great shallow diving crankbait. I don't know what color I'm going to throw. I'm going to throw, uh, I kind of want to throw red, but there's nothing red in here. So, unless, I, do I have a shallow one? Do I have a Harbor Hunter shallow? Hmm. I don't know if I have any shallow. That's a bummer. Oh, well. Ooh, unless that's shallow. Nope. 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 All right. I don't have any of the shallow variety. That's a hybrid hunter. They got a loud one knocker bead inside. And this bill gives it a really cool hunting. It literally hunts in the water. I mean, a lot of, a lot of baits out there say they hunt in the water, but a lot of baits don't. The hybrid hunter does. At least all the ones that I have used actually hunt. All right. Got this. And I love this lure, especially around shallow grass. I've caught big bass, several five, six, seven pounders on it around rocks, and a 10.7. I caught two springs ago on some riprap rocks on a bridge. Harbor Hunter catches them. And I will leave a uh, instructional video down below that I made on how to fish this thing. Everything you have to know about it, why it's special. And I really feel like, if you guys follow the channel uh, and really social medias, Instagram, TikTok, you know that I travel and film with the MLF Pro Alton Jones Jr. Let me check the lighting. It's good. And uh, man, I learn a lot from traveling with him. But one of the biggest things I think I, I learned is how to fish efficiently. And when you're thinking about making a switch to something, a new lure, trying something else, you, you got to do it. You got to try it because he's he is always bouncing around from lure to lure. If something's in his head, he's trying it out and it leads him to catch a lot of fish. So I, I've really been trying to not suppress my feelings when it comes to switching lures. You know, I'm catching them on a vibrating jig, but I could catch them on a hybrid hunter. And maybe the big ones want that, you know, one knocker. But maybe I also make a dozen casts with it on one spot, don't catch one, go back to the vibrating jig and catch one the next cast. So you really gotta be willing to try lots of things and fail at a few of them. And that's what I'm doing today. 
trying the hybrid, trying the hunter, just making fan casts. And it's actually doing a lot better than I thought it would. It's being relatively weedless. Got me that time. Got me that time. The rod tip up. This version, well, 20 pound line on there, um, or seven, 17, 17, probably dives to three feet, maybe two and a half. The shallow one dives to like one and a half max. And so I need to pick up some more shallow hybrid hunters for this kind of situation where, you know, it may be two feet over the grass most of the time, but then when it hits that one little clump that's high up, it's not gonna get stuck. But I mean, as far as crankbaits go, it's the most weedless of them all. All right, well, I guess I cleaned out that area. I wish these fish were sitting in groups of a dozen, but just don't think that's the case. Because again, northern fishery, if they're there, they're gonna bite. Or they're at least gonna show themselves. It's amazing how this thing rips out of the grass. It's actually doing, it's doing a lot better than I thought it would. And a fish? No. Well, unless, no, grass. Lots of grass. Lots and lots of grass. And one well, that's kind of dying off. Hmm, this coontail's lost a lot of its a lot of its leaves, which got a lot of stalks right here. So I'm not going to make a cast back in that area because fish, I mean, I don't care what time of the year it is, but especially fall, they want the cleanest, healthiest grass possible. All right, I'm going to get off spot lock, head out, head out a little deeper. I've got a wedgie inside of my bibs. There we go. Yeah, and I get farther off the point here and not a whole lot of grass, kind of sparse as I look down there. And right where I caught those two bass and had the one follow was the edge. Just, just stereotypical fall stuff. On the point, wind blowing into it, on the edge of the grass. Now there are some days when they might be on the they might be on the flat, or they might be sitting way off the edge in open water. But I can just tell you guys from experience, this time of year you gotta fish high percentage stuff, and you're gonna find success more times than not. Yeah, I, I'm looking down right now and I'm not liking the health of this grass. So, probably gonna move on from this point here. We're already way off the point, but not seeing what I like anymore. Not seeing what I like anymore. Yep, and just like Alton would do, I'm gonna move spots right now. No more waiting. Gonna be as efficient as possible. And now we're actually gonna get the, get the trolling motor up. And go for a move, <laughs> powerful move. Get this camera, I need to zip up this bag here or else I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose something. Ugh. And we're all speed warp to the next spot.
Here we go. Let's do it. We're going. We're going, baby. Put the trolling motor down. Now, I, I didn't fish this point because there was the that Lund over there was sitting on it the first time I was here. But, I again, I, I just don't think they probably know what they're doing. Might not be as dialed. As if I'm dialed. I don't know. I feel like I'm kind of dialed today, but maybe not. And it's not, it's not even really a great point. I'll have to look at the map. I think I've kind of exhausted the really good looking points. So I'm kind of fishing secondary points and, oh gosh, there we go. This line is old. I need a new line on this reel. Always got to make an excuse for your backlash, folks. Pro tip for you. I'm always giving you guys fishing advice. It's, this is this is a, this is a save your save your reputation advice. If you want to be if you want to be a good angler, you got to make excuses for your backlashes. Oh, it's old line. Oh, my brother, my brother used this reel. My dad used this reel. He doesn't know what he's doing. You got to make excuses, even if they're valid. Which old line is? Is valid. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not seeing. I'm not seeing the good clump clump. You know that I was seeing earlier on this grass edge. And there's probably two to three more good points on this whole lake, and we're gonna fish them all. Gonna fish them all in this video. Now, as always, there's probably some mega honey hole that I just, because I, I don't live here, I don't know where it's at. And that's okay. Not going to win them all. Not going to win them all. I don't really like this. I don't like this grass. Oh, gosh, never mind. <laughs> never mind. Forget I even said that. Forget I said that. Hybrid hunter, baby. All right. He's no bigger than any bass that I got on other lures. So it's not like I've discovered, you know, the, the big secret. But I guess no matter the grass, and this, this, this stuff's alive. It's alive grass. I just don't like the, uh, the type it is. I guess if it's alive and it's on a point, they'll be here. We are still 100% on points having bass. If that's not worth your subscribe and a like and a comment, I don't know what is. I don't know what is. For y'all who have made it this far in the video, how's folding laundry going? How's, how's the dishes? Dishes getting clean? How's, uh, how's, your, how's your shower? How's, how's uh, washing your face and getting ready for bed going? How's, how's the drive? The, the, the drive home from work going good? I know a lot of you guys watch these uncut videos kind of like a podcast style as you're, you're doing things in life. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be a part of y'all's y'all's daily lives. It means a lot to me. It means a lot to me. And if I guessed your predicament, comment below. And, and those of y'all who have watched the uncuts know at some point during every uncut, I get that song in my head. I don't know what it is. It's the turn around every now and then I get that song. Some, someone at some point commented what it was but I can't go and uncut without at some point singing that song. As weird as it is. It's my uncut song. All right. Even though I caught one here on the hybrid hunter, I just don't know if it's the right lure for 
the point. I just, I love, I love the fact that I can kind of get it stuck in the grass, speed up my retrieve and get it out of there. And I'm also covering more water faster than I am the vibrating jig. Ah. Tell you what though, on these, on these filming trips, I don't eat a whole lot. I, I, I had planned on going to the grocery store and getting, you know, material to make sandwiches and I just never did. So every day this week, I've basically gotten up, gotten coffee, maybe breakfast, and then uh, I go to the lake. I'm on the, on the water by 9.30 or so. I uh, film all day and then get off the water at 6, 7 and eat dinner. And that's, that's been my schedule, which is definitely not good for your health, I think. Although maybe somebody comment below, if you're a nutritionist, maybe what I'm doing is like intermittent fasting or something. I don't know, maybe it's good. Last cast here, this, this wasn't a good point. And obviously I only had one little small fish on it. Gosh dang son, a fish, a fish. Oh, I, oh what a horrible cast, dang it. A bass exploded back there, and I made just the worst cast. Let me try it again. Try it again. There we go. Come on now. Come back for it. Eat it. Ah, grass. All right. That's it for this point. Yeah. Get the grass off of there. Put the hook on there. Get the move up here. Yeet! Let's find another point. What am I gonna throw? What am I gonna throw now? We got a little bit of a point here. It's not, it's not, again, it's not like a harsh point. I do like those points that are really defined. Um, I guess I'll just throw the vibrating jig. Oh, I need your trailer though. Forgot about that. I forgot about that. This is not my trailer, but I also don't like how they're how they're sitting. So redo that in the package there. Great. This will do. Rage bug. Rage structure bug. Come on now. Open the bag, please. Thank you. And what I do is I always take off one of the claws on the side. And what that does is allows me to rig it vertically on that side. So I line it up. Oh, this is the smaller rage bug, dang. This is not the size I wanted, but most of the action is coming from the blade anyways, so we're good. Rig it vertically, trying to get deeper in the water column. There we go. Love it. Love it. I like it. I love it. I want some more of it. And I'm going to start out deep here in about eight feet of water. Slow roll on this thing, but I really think most of the fish are going to come on the point side, which is, which is up there. How's lighting looking? We blown out back there? No, we're great. Zing! Grass is looking kind of sparse, so I don't have high, high hopes here. We're still 100% though, so don't let this be the point. The point that does it to me. I gotta make sure my screen is clear. That's much better. I'm gonna head shallower so I can use my eyes to tell where the grass is because I'm just not seeing many clumps. I'm not seeing the clumpy dumps.
I could totally see how this lake in the springtime would just be so easy to catch fish in. There's, there's so much good shallow cover. Bass are cruising around, swim jigging, casting a casting an ocho around. This is a springtime lake for sure. Oh, we got a good clump right in front of me here. Nope, grass. That's uh, it's it's half alive, half dead. Doesn't look too bad though. Spot lock us. Where'd the button go? There it is. Come on. Get it right there. Come on, clumpy fish. Where are you? Where are you? I gotta make some bomb casts with the plopper. Cause I think I see some, some clumps up there. And I'd rather hit them with this first. Scoosh! Scoosh! Don't wreck my streak! I guess we're not even to the, the best part of the point yet, but please don't do it. I'm 100%. Proud of my record. I'm proud of my record as a district attorney. Ain't nobody gonna tarnish that record. Come on now. Let's go, right here. Right here, over the point. Over the point. Under the sea. I'm ADD. Last cast for this. All right. Not what I wanted. Check my lighting again, the sun popped out. We're good enough. Start my fan casts. Vibrating jig. Come on. I refuse to believe there's not bass on this point. There's gotta be. There's gotta be, please, please. Please be bass. Please be a juicy, delicious bass. Give me one, just one. Either way, I'd say this uncut has been a success. Would you not? However this ends. We got, oh, we got a point over there I wanna hit, okay. Whether or not this thing, whether or, not, whether or not we're successful on this point, which again, I hope we are. Still thinking I'll catch one. Yep, yep, I told you, I told you. Get in here, get in here. Stepped on my hybrid hunter, we're good. Let's go baby, keep this streak alive. Thank you, my friend. Not a giant, but a fish that I'm grateful to have. Spot lock us here, make the same cast. Right on the tip of the point. what I tell you? What did I tell you? Man. I remember, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna brag on 
This is gonna, this is gonna sound arrogant, but I'm, I'm not meaning it to be. I'm gonna brag on myself for a little bit. When I first started making YouTube videos, granted, I probably didn't know much, but I was teaching what I knew. I, I was teaching the techniques that worked for me. Looking back, I was wrong to some extent on some of it, some of the techniques and, and teaching and such, the platitudes that I would you know, read in the magazine and you know, repeat verbatim that maybe weren't exactly correct. And because of that, I mean, I think a lot of pro fishermen, when, when YouTubers first came around, pro fishermen were saying, oh, don't follow these YouTubers. They have no clue what they're talking about. And, you know, to a certain extent, some of them were right. There are some fishing YouTubers that only fish private bodies of water, never travel anywhere, fish one, fish one pond, one lake in their backyard, and are claiming to give all these tips. And while some of them were not wrong, they're not all right. And I kind of got lumped into that category of anglers that might not know what they're doing. But I'm proud of myself with all the work that I've put in, the traveling, the, the fishing, you know, bodies of water, both big and small, of understanding these fish, learning about movements. I mean, I'm, I am a, I'm a lover of learning. And that's honestly a huge perk of traveling with an MLF Pro, one of the best on the planet right now. My best friend, oh gosh, there's one. Got him. My best friend is one of the best fishermen on the planet. So I get to learn from him, the techniques he's using, the stuff he's understanding about bodies of water, and, and I get to then teach you guys. And so I can confidently say that I know what I'm doing. And that's, that's not, I'm not trying to be braggadocious. Sometimes I don't figure him out. Sometimes, I mean, every fisherman has that. Every fisherman has days that are tough where you don't quite know what you're doing. Nothing works. I get skunked some days. But I'm, I'm really proud, especially on days like today, that I can show up to a brand new lake and within a few hours figure out at least something the bass are doing to have a successful day catching fish. And I'm proud of that. And I'm glad that I can do it. I'm glad that I can do it with you guys. So thank you for... For being here with me. This is fun. This is a lot of stinking fun. So next time somebody tells you, oh, I don't watch YouTubers. They're a bunch of private pond fishermen. Do we fish private ponds? Yes. I love them. They're a lot of fun. I, but I wouldn't say guaranteed fish catch, but a lot more guaranteed than some lakes. But I love learning. I love electronics and fish finders and understanding how fish move based on weather that's why I'm, that's why I'm a part of bass forecast because I want to understand how weather affects our bodies of water and that's exactly what that algorithm does so if you are a learner like me and you want to learn not just bass fishing but things in life you belong here on the channel and I'm uh, I'm glad you're here all right I've done well hold up Eh, I was going to make a cast with a hybrid hunter, but I kind of want to fish that one last point. So I'm going to make just a few more casts here, hop up to a point over there, which really is the, on the map, it didn't even look that nice of a point, but it, it does look nicer now, now that I'm seeing it with my eyes, with my eye scope. And we'll finish out the uncut over there. Really haven't been happy with the quality on this lake. I was I was for a little bit when I was catching nothing but two pounders and back back to back, but since then I've really struggled to find a bigger one. Last cast here. Not one more. I see a patch right here. Alright. Put this rod down. Get the trolling motor up. Let's go, baby. One more spot. Let's do it. All right, baby. Let's do it. I love it. I want some more of it. And you'll be able to tell by this last drone shot here, this is a good looking point too. Now maybe on the drone shot y'all can actually see where the grass is. I can't tell by just looking all the time until I get close, but 
I think this one's got a, a nice grass edge. Nice coon tail. That, let me look at it. Well, it's not, it's not dead, but it's also not, uh, not that alive. And cast back this way. It looks like we have an edge, an inside edge and an outside, like a thin, a thin stripe of grass that runs along the whole outside of this point here. Cause it gets, it looks like it gets really shallow up on the point. So I'm not even gonna get close to the bank. I'm gonna stay, stay way out here. That's good, healthy grass. That's the kind you wanna see. Now I always fish up to the point, at least on, on days like today when the wind's coming this way, I'm gonna start on the downside of it and then work my way this way. And that's gonna mean that I might be fishing some slightly less productive water for just a second, but I do like the way all these coontail clumps look. And I just had a bite. I for sure just had a bite. Had to be, had to be a bite. I'm gonna go back in there with the free rig. A rig that I've been loving lately. Come on now. I'm actually filmed uh, in the process of filming a video on the free rig, really learning how to use it well. And that video will not be out though until the springtime. Just because, like I said, I got a lot going on. Come spring, baby on the way, being back on tour again. Our house, we're building the house right now. It's being uh, completed in January. So we just got a lot of stuff going on. So I'm trying to hedge my bets and still keep the channel going. And the free rig video, I feel like makes more sense to do in the spring. Give people all, all season to test it out for themselves. All right, whatever that fish was, did not want it again. I really wish it was dead calm and sunny so I could see all these clumps and I would cast a, I'd cast a, either a swim jig to the clumps or a weightless stick bait or caffeine shad. That'd be fun. Maybe even a topwater, actually topwater popper maybe. But it's a little, a little ripply. I can't see until I get closer to them. But I think I'm on the inside edge right now. And let me... My screen's a little too stretched. Yeah. Outside edges out here. It's a, I mean, this is a fantastic coontail edge. Or a, a streak, I should say. No, no, it's an edge. We got, a, we got an edge out here. Look at Lyoscope right there. That's a beautiful looking edge. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna get myself way on the outside of this because this could be a spot where I get my first, my first football jig fish of the day. Maybe. I just I kinda wanna see some, I wanna see a bass on the screen. Man, we got a pack of bluegill out here. Look at that. Look at those bluegill, my goodness. Lots of them. You'd think there'd be a bass around there. You'd think so. Not always the case. You'd think casting a vibrating jade down there, giving it some hops, there'd be a bass, but I guess not every time. Do, 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 do. There's one. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That feels nicer. That feels nicer. 
What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Oh, we got a fish. And he had me stuck in some grass. A chunkier one. I'm not gonna complain about a little fish like this. Thank you, my friend. Nice one. On the Thunder Cricket. I had to get to the, uh, I had to get to the deep side, the deep side of the point. Come on now, come on now. Oof, there's some fish down there. I'm gonna go drop shot. I know I said that I like the free rig, but I still like the drop shot more in this area of Minnesota just for, just for casting to areas that I think might have fish. And I can actually see on the screen. Where are they at though? Where did a fish go? Oh, what a bad cast. Oh. It'll work. There's, an, there's, a, there's a bass in the area, he'll find it. Shake, shake, shake. Shake your drop shot. Shake your drop shot. You know what, folks? We are 100% in this video on the exact pattern that I was trying to do. It's pretty cool. I'm proud of myself. Proud of myself that I figured them out. Every place I've stopped has had a fish on it, and I've caught one. Not pleased with the size. And I'm not even sure if I spent all day here if I'd, uh, if I'd ever figure out how to catch bigger ones. Might take, it might take a few days on this single body of water, you know, dissecting it, fishing different lures, different depth zones to really find out what the bigger ones are doing. And then there's also some lakes that, especially these small lakes, they just don't got many big ones. You know, two to three pounders, a nice fish. And that could be the way this is. Gosh, so many fish, just lost another one. They are sitting literally on this on this drop off They're on the top side of this coontail edge beautiful 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 do 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 I'm just looking around for clumps What a lovely day, man. Gosh, it's so nice, I love this. A few more casts, and man, we're gonna call it a day. Let's try to catch one. Try to catch one to finish it out. Finish her out. But don't go anywhere. Don't go, don't, y'all don't leave. I'm not, I'm not done yet. Got something to tell y'all. A little secret per se. Zoom. Yeah, I'm not seeing nearly. Is that a fish? No, grass. Yeah, there we go. There we go. That right there, folks, is what you call cabbage. Cabbage patch kids. A lot of the times, zebra mussels will hang on the cabbage leaves. Come on, fish. Come on now. Come on now, boy. Nope. Last cast right here. Bazinga. Just catch me one more fish, Mr. Tungsten Thunder Cricket. You've been so good to me today. So, so good. Do a little, do a little figure eight just for good measure. Wow, folks, what that, what the, I was gonna say what a good what, what was I gonna say? What the heck? Whatever, what a good uncut. That was fun. That was a blast, hopefully you enjoyed 
I love this uh, this job, this channel. I didn't really have a secret. I just wanted to tell you thank you, and I love you guys, and you're, you're the best. And if you want to see a previous uncut I made last fall, bam, up here in the corner, I will have that linked. As always, it's a pleasure. I love getting to hang with you guys on camera, and we'll see you guys next time right here on TRF or over in that video.